So it's essentially like a series of questions to which there are short or long answers, mostly like you know one line answers. So the first question is, this is of course, so everything will be about electroweak theory. So there are two parts, electroweak theory without masses and then the spontaneous symmetry breaking and the Higgs mechanism to give masses, right? And we have not done how the fermions get masses, so I won't ask you questions about that part. So the first question is, why can we not add an explicit mass term to the Lagrangian? Okay, who wants to answer this? When we get uh, m square is less than 0, right? Uh, no, 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 no. So, let we, I am going to start with electroweak theory. Okay, so there is no spontaneous symmetry breaking yet. So, I do not want you to confuse between the two. So, how did I start uh, after uh, the mid, mid uh, uh, semester exam? I talked to you about V minus A, a Fermi theory to show that it is not pure. Uh, vector interaction, but V minus A type of interaction. We did the uh, muon decay and then we came to proper formal electroweak theory. We abandoned all those cross section or trace calculations and I came to massless interaction. So I said we will start with massless SU2 cross U1. We started first with SU2, then we added the U1. That also will be a question. But I said we cannot add an explicit mass term to the Lagrangian. This is for electroweak. So this is not, this is much before spontaneous symmetry breaking, where you add scalar field with mass squared less than 0 and things like that, okay. So does anyone remember the answer to this question or want to take a guess? It's an explicit mass too. Huh. Suppose I want to write. Very nice, very nice. Who answered this? Jatin. Okay, let me actually start putting ticks. So, let me put Jatin over here. Otherwise, I will lose track of who has answered. Of course, you can keep track of it yourself. So, this is the question. This is the Lagrangian for the Dirac field, for example. But if you write a current for SU2, let us write some SU2 currents. What are the SU2 currents? There are three of them, right? So, J mu A, sorry, J mu A is equal to psi bar. So, we will forget the overall constant, does not matter. Gamma mu, sigma A. So, let us call this alpha, alpha beta, okay. So, what I had written it for you will be as J mu plus j mu minus and j mu 3, right? And you will find that, for example, if you take j mu plus, let us take a combination E bar uh, gamma mu d mu minus m mu and this is all left handed, right? Sorry, let us not write the term, let us write the uh, current, I am sorry. Let us write the current, let us j mu plus is equal to g e bar minus gamma phi. So, I have explicitly written the left handed current, okay. And if I do d mu j mu of this, then it will give you the difference of the masses m e minus m nu and therefore, if you put mass terms, the Lagrangian is not invariant under that transformation. Is this clear to everybody? So, this is just like a revision. I mean, I want you to answer one question if possible and for the rest of you who do not know the answer, please look, look on it as revision, okay. Is this clear to everybody? Can I ask the next question? No, the beautiful board has gone. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. What is the condition that we need to derive 
the transformation of the W mu fields when psi goes to psi prime is equal to u psi. So, not Jatin, but anybody else? The covariant. Ha, very nice. So, the covariant derivative. Yeah. Very nice. Psi. So, du is ut. Very nice. So, everybody remembers this. I think you did this in breakout classes. So, I hope you remember this. So, why? Wh where does this condition come from? This is the condition required to keep the Lagrangian invariant as you can check for yourself okay because the Lagrangian is psi bar i slash psi. So, L prime will be psi bar prime i t slash prime psi prime which is psi bar u dagger i d slash prime u psi. So, if you want this to be equal to psi bar d slash psi, then you immediately are left with d prime u is equal to u d. Is it clear to everybody? Okay. So, a similar question. How do you obtain the kinetic energy term for the gauge fields generically in general? That is that is the covariant derivative. So, I have a covariant derivative yes d mu is equal to d mu plus some g times some maybe sigma a maybe by 2 maybe w mu a let us write for su 2 only ok fine. Now, what somebody one person answer maybe Samim. Ok sorry Krishna yeah thank you huh, Krishna. Just like in uh, electromagnetism f mu nu f mu nu equal to means uh, our uh, condition is here also g mu nu kind of condition. I do not remember. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. correct. So, first, so the first step let everyone agree first step is that you are going to get some overall factor either minus quarter minus half or whatever trace g mu nu g mu nu right. Okay. But how do you get this g mu nu that is the question right. I want to get this g mu nu. How will I get it starting from d mu? Can anybody else answer? The commutation in relation. Also. Yeah, so what is that? What is the commutation relation? Okay, and g mu nu is defined as. So, if you want I could have just called it g mu nu ok. Is this clear? Huh? But now I do not want uh, Jatin, Amit, Krishna, Vaibhav and who else to, to answer ok. Please just everyone I want everyone to try to answer just to make sure that you have understood some basic things and those who did not know the answers I hope this helps. So, okay. Now, when I started with pure, so this is the which question is this? This is the fourth question. So, when I consider pure SU2, So, then I defined 
w plus w minus in terms of w1 and w2 and then I had w3 left. Now the question is why was w3 or why could w3 not be identified as the it is already neutral. So, it could have been identified as the electromagnetic field. Oops. Okay, uh, sorry, we we got uh, we got disconnected. Is it okay? Can you see the can you see the uh, board still? Can you hear me? Yeah, sorry, I don't know what happened. Yeah, okay, fine. So maybe I should wait a little for the others to join in. Uh, I think everybody has not come back in. Has everybody come back in? Let me just check. Yeah, okay, fine. We did not go anywhere, you lost the connection. No, that is what I said, you know, so I, I want, oh, okay, you were not, you did not get disconnected, is it? I got disconnected, no. okay, yeah. fine, good, that is good to hear, okay. So, now this is the thick question, consider pure SU2, we wrote W1, W2 in terms of W plus W minus and W3 as W3. So, why could W3 not be identified as the electromagnetic field? Because it is a neutral current, right? I mean, it is a neutral, uh, it, it would couple to a neutral current. So, I could identify this as the electromagnetic field. Question is why could not we do it? Now, can I have answers from people who have not answered so far? Just try, please try so that you know you get a feeling for what you know and what you do not know and it does not matter if you are wrong, okay? That is not massless. Uh, no, we are okay, fine. So, please remember I am still in, I am still in massless electric weak theory, okay? So, in massless electroweak theory, I first introduced SU2L, then I found this was not sufficient, then I direct product with U1Y and later on I add mass. So, I have not come to mass yet. So, everything is massless. So, that is not the answer, but it is a good try. Can you think of anything else? Can anybody else think of anything else? Okay, amongst uh, who? Ravi, Koyana? and Adarsh. Can one of you try an answer? No? Yes? Okay. okay. Does anyone know the answer? Can anyone can try now? Sorry, one at a time. First Krishna, then Jatin. Okay. Let us hear Krishna first. Correct. Uh, but, uh, Very good. So, so if you if you write the if you write the generators, T plus, T minus, and T three, okay, then T three is actually coming from sigma three, right? Sigma three, T three is sigma three by two, which is one zero zero minus one. So it will give you, for example, nu bar gamma mu into one minus gamma phi, which I wrote as L nu L minus E bar L gamma mu E L. Okay, this is T3. This is coming, the T3 current will give you this. Whereas you want the electromagnetic current to be 0 minus E bar L gamma mu E L minus E bar R gamma mu E R. Is it clear? So, this is sigma 3 and only left handed. Whereas the charge interaction should couple not at all coupled to neutrino, 
this sign comes out right, but it should couple equally to left and right handed fields. That is the nature of electromagnetic interaction, right? It couples equally, it is a vector current, it couples equally to the left and right fields. The SU2L couples only to the left handed fields. Is this clear to everybody? Okay, again I hear the same people answering. I hope that the others are not completely lost. Okay. Let me ask my next question. So, I am still in. Yeah, ask. Yeah, ask. At some point, is the SU2 just SU2 even self consistent? I mean, I have heard that it, it was a alternative to the SU2 plus U1 at some point. No, no, no. See, the thing is that the pure SU2 was always there, okay, but you see okay okay what okay let me ask that four prime question what is the limitation even if you have pure su2 so what is the limitation of pure su2 you see that the j currents j plus and j minus have to couple to w plus and w minus right even if you say that w3 is some neutral current or some neut so there is some j3 which couples to w3 and maybe the W3 exists and the J3 exists and we can observe it in the lab. What, what the problem is, the limitation of this is that W plus W minus are charged particles, right? That means they must interact with the electromagnetic field, okay? So, by itself SU2 will not allow you to, to include electromagnetic interactions. So, first of all you said that W3 is a neutral field, sorry neutral, uh, yeah it is a neutral field which will couple to a neutral uh, current, but that current cannot be the electromagnetic current, okay. And the second problem is that W plus W minus how charged particles they must interact with an electromagnetic field and therefore SU2 by itself is incomplete, okay. So, this is where we are. So, is this clear? So, pure SU2 does not work. Sorry, there was a question. There are two arguments. So, the first argument is that we just showed this argument. So, I said that you have, so the there are three generators in SU2 and therefore there are three fields, there are three gauge fields which I can write, I mean the W1, W2, W3 I have rewritten as W plus W minus and W3, right. Now, W plus and W minus give you the currents J plus J minus which we see in the lab, no problem. Now, W3 already was a problem because it is some neutral current which has not yet been seen in the lab. So, your first question is could you identify this as the electromagnetic current and the answer we just saw was no. So, J3 is not equal to J mu electromagnetic, right? That is the first point. The second point is that W plus W minus are charged particles because they are charged particles, they have to interact with the electromagnetic field because the electromagnetic field interacts with all charged particles. So, within pure SU2, there is no scope for any charged particle to interact with electromagnetic field, right? Because this, this did not work. If this had been the electromagnetic field, then W plus W minus through their interaction with W3 could interact with the electromagnetic field, but that does not happen. So, on both counts, pure SU2 fails. And therefore, you increase your group to a direct product of SU2 and U1, okay. So, that was the next, the, now what is the next question? The next question is, yeah. So, in fact, we have practically answered the next question. Maybe somebody else should try the answer to this, why, oops, where did it go? Why do we need, so now let me write that SU2 fields are called Ws and u1 y fields are called b's. So, why do we need w3 and b to mix? Who would like to try this answer? We have mixing between w3 and b mu, right? These are the diagonal fields because W3 comes with sigma 3 which is a diagonal uh, matrix. So, the W3 interactions are diagonal and of course, B is B into unit matrix. So, that is also diagonal, okay. 
but they need not mix right w3 could have been separate like for example w plus and w3 don't mix right so why do we need w3 and b to mix there is a reason that we don't just write the physical fields are w3 and b but we write what are the physical fields to mix and give the physical fields a is equal to cos theta w b mu plus sin theta w uh, w 3 and z mu is the orthogonal part minus c plus s. So, that was my question why do we need now this will give you a hint why do we need w 3 and b to mix. Why can I not identify w 3 as the weak neutral current and B as the electromagnetic field. Then I can simply have U1 is equal to U1 electromagnetic, right? Why do I have to put hypercharge and then mix it and do various complicated things? That is my question. Is the question clear? I do not hear any anyone at all. Am I uh, alive? Uh, yes, ma'am. Ah, okay, yes, fine. Yes. Ha, okay. You are thinking, okay. Uh, do you want more hints? What did I just say in 4 prime? We wanted W plus W minus to interact with electromagnetic field, right? So, why do we want W plus W minus to interact with electromagnetic field? Because they are charged particles, okay. So, if I identify B mu as the A mu electromagnetic field and these two do not mix, then what will happen to W plus W minus? Okay, I will give you they are self interacting. So, let me write that self interaction term. So, G mu nu A is equal to d mu w nu a minus d nu. So, this is the same as you have for uh, electromagnetic field and then you have the extra term minus g epsilon a b c w mu b w nu c. So, because of this term when you square it in the Lagrangian you write g mu nu g mu nu terms okay, and therefore, you get d w square terms when this is squared or you get dW into WW trilinear coupling or WW into WW quartic interactions, right. So, that means all the Ws interact with each other. This is what it means to have interaction terms which comes about because as I said of the non-abelian nature of the SU2, okay, that they do not commute, the sigmas do not commute with each other and the Ts do not commute with each other, okay. So, you can see that there are interactions between the Ws. So, W plus W minus will interact with W3, but what happens to the electromagnetic field? We also want W plus W minus to interact with A, right? Because they are charged particles. So, if W3 and B do not mix, if they do not mix, then how will W plus W minus interact with the electromagnetic field? Is the answer clear? Is the answer clear? So, what we have is that I define W3 to have. So, if you, you can invert these relations, okay. Sorry, this is wrong minus sin cos. So, I can write W3 as so I multiply uh, this by sin and this. So, W3 is equal to. Uh, sin theta w a mu plus cos theta w, I have just inverted this relation, right. So, that means w 3 has a component inside it which is a mu, which is what we identify as the physical electromagnetic field. And therefore, in w plus w minus, which interacts with w 3 because of these interactions. So, you can take a look at one of these, right. So, for example, I have three w's at some point, right. Let me 
write 3 w's at some point let me call it w plus w minus and w3 i am allowed to have this kind of interaction for 3 w's you can see the charge is conserved so i cannot have w plus w minus w plus because then charge is not conserved i can of course have w3 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 which i will have and of course for four interactions i, I can have w plus w minus w plus w minus or w plus w minus w3 w3 and so on so you can see that if this is gamma this is equal to a mu into sin theta w right so this vertex will now allow me to have an interaction between w plus w minus and the electromagnetic field so it is necessary for w3 and b to mix so that w plus w minus can interact with the electromagnetic field is this clear and that is why we had this complication in the neutral current sector where we had to rewrite w3 and b in terms of new physical fields a and z through this weinberg mixing angle theta w okay is it clear to everybody yes sir okay okay good so does it help to revise uh, sorry uh, ask the question yeah uh, Huh. So, ma'am, uh, charged particles uh, that uh, are uh, creates from different theory means just like uh, some uh, from charged particles that are created from uh, electromagnetic and charged particles created from weak interaction. So, they are different in nature or they are same. In nature? No, no, no. This is this is the electromagnetic field. This is the electromagnetic field. See, the the difference is this. When when we started out. in the beginning of this course we did pure electromagnetism pure electromagnetism i can always write a pure u1 electromagnetism theory as long as i don't have weak interactions it's completely consistent by itself because it's a conserved current the charge is conserved everything happens and i have no problem at all the moment i want to bring in weak interactions the weak interaction mediators are charged because of that it is we find that it's impossible to have a pure weak sector that's why it's called electro weak sector okay i mean this is how the standard model was developed when uh, georgi first wrote you know his theory so people started looking at su2 and then realized very quickly that once these particles are charged and you can see they are charged because they are off diagonal interactions sigma plus and sigma minus are off diagonal interactions delta q equal to 1 always so if i write if i write a current which is nu bar uh, some gamma e or u bar sum gamma d then you can see delta q is equal to 1 in both cases right so my pure uh, charge current interactions which interact with w plus w minus are forcing w plus and w minus to have the electric charge plus and minus that's how they are called plus and minus okay they are charged fields so because of that because of this fact i cannot have a pure weak sector i must have an electro weak theory and this is that same electromagnetic field that same electromagnetic field shows itself in this avatar it's f mu nu is the same f mu nu that we wrote for pure ele electromagnetic field which will just be this portion with a mu replacing w mu okay there are no two electromagnetic fields there is just one but in combining weak and electromagnetic interactions this a mu turns out to be a, a composition of a neutral weak current and a u1 vector current okay such that we know the charge is now defined as t3 plus or i3 plus y by 2 so this is the unbroken part we will maybe come to that when we come to the higgs mechanism okay but is it clear by the way is this helping to revise like this or is it confusing all of you okay <laughs> okay are you telling me to go on or should i stop is the question i don't want to confuse you at the end of the you know semester that's all so shall i go on to question 6 7 8 and all that okay okay so what is the question 6 Okay, so question six is 
Okay, I think we have already answered this, but let me write it down. Which term in the Lagrangian gives interaction between W plus W minus and gamma? So, I guess you can see it here. This is the interaction. I have already answered this. Is it clear that it comes from the so called kinetic energy term, but the kinetic energy term also contains interactions for non abelian theories. So, this is the pure kinetic energy term, okay, which we understand from uh, electromagnetism, Maxwell's equations, and the extra piece which comes from the non abelian nature of the theory gives you trilinear and quartic interactions of the gauge fields. So, that answer I am giving myself, I guess there is nothing more to say about that. Okay, so, let us move on to the next question. Okay, so, uh, in fact, we should have kept that there. So, I am answering now, we had already asked why do we need uh, B and W3 to mix. Okay, so, I said we need B and W3 to mix, we have understood so that W plus W minus can interact with gamma. Now, I am asking the question, suppose flavor changing neutral currents exist flavor changing neutral currents. We showed in a class earlier that observationally there are no flavor changing neutral currents and therefore, even now we are writing not the uh, Weinberg mixing, but we are writing the Kabibo mixing is equal to d cos sorry maybe I will write it as cos theta Kabibo times d plus sin theta Kabibo times s. So, I am mixing d s B is equal to some mixing matrix times D S and B. Okay? And we say that this does not affect neutral currents, there is no D going to S, there is only D going to D S going to S, we wrote that construction, you can look it up. So, that if D goes to S that is called flavor changing neutral current. Suppose flavor changing neutral currents were actually seen in nature, okay. Not that they are not seen, but let us imagine that they are seen, okay. That means that means that Z can mix flavors, mix flavors so that so let us imagine that this happens. Okay. My question is what goes wrong? Wrong. The matrix which you wrote for uh, connecting D prime to D. Uh, yeah. That is not uh, like CK matrix, like is it different? This is exactly the CK matrix. Uh, you said they want this. So this is exactly the CK matrix. Mean? Sorry? Uh, they mix, right? Like we have from like yeah, so let, let me be very clear about it. Even though uh, D, S and B completely mix to give you, so these are called usually the mass eigenstates, these are called the flavor eigenstates and the CK matrix shows you how the mass eigenstates can be written in terms of the flavor eigenstates. However, this will give you a mixing so that for example, uh, U, okay, let us say uh, D goes to U or maybe I should write it the other way around, u goes to d as well as u goes to s. This is when you have charge current interactions. However, this is not seen in nature that is d goes to s, neutral current is not seen, not seen. Only d goes to d and s goes to s are seen in nature and in fact, this way of writing the mixing ensures that the neutral current does not mix flavors. Okay, so, that means in nature flavor changing neutral currents are not seen and therefore, this way of doing things ensures that flavor changing neutral currents are not found. But suppose actually you see because so far you have not seen it, maybe it is very very small, maybe it is 0.001 percent, then what will happen? That means, Z can actually mix the flavors, that means I can have instead of saying no to this, I can actually have, but can I really have such a term because what goes wrong in the electromagnetic sector? That is my question. Is the question clear? What goes wrong in the electromagnetic sector? Can anyone tell me? 
for a hint I will write again on the right side of the board for a hint I will write W3 is equal to cos theta which one I just wrote and I forgot which way is it oh I have not written it down myself I think it is Z okay but okay, here is my hint okay uh, charge will be conserved because you see these two have the same charge but what will happen is that you will have this even in photon interactions because photon and Z are simply mixtures of W3 and B right. So that means if this is allowed with the Z it will be allowed with the A because they are simply different com combinations of the two fields right. So if say let us say that W3 allows the flavor changing or maybe B allows the flavor changing then Z and A will both allow the flavor changing right and therefore what will happen is that the electromagnetic field starts carrying flavor quantum numbers. So the photon the A mu field should have something which will contain maybe you know I will call it D bar S quantum number so that it can send D to S right. So that will be terrible because we know that the photon does not carry these quantum numbers and therefore even if you see flavor changing neutral currents you cannot simply implement it so easily in the way the standard model is written at present. So maybe that was a difficult question so you can ponder over it a little we will go on to the yeah ask. It is the way same thing no see either you talk about W3 B is some matrix mixing matrix M times Z A which means that Z A is equal to M dagger W3 B. So if one mixes the other mixes right. So suppose I say Z allows for flavor changing current that means either W3 should allow it or B should allow it or both should allow it in which case since they are simply tra transposes or you know daggers of each other if Z allows it then A should also allow it because it, they are made from the same set of fields right only in different combinations. Is it clear is the answer clear ok. So let me go on to the next question 8 uh, ok. I think this is simple I strongly urge those who have not answered so far to please try this ok. Why do not we have terms do not we have terms like in the Lagrangian. Can please somebody who has not answered so far try this? The question is clear. Why do not we have right handed neutrino kinetic energy term in the Lagrangian for standard model? All this is electroweak interaction, standard model, whatever. No? Others want to try? Yeah, uh, right handed neutrino do not exist. We have seen yeah, it does not exist and therefore you do not put it in. The other thing is that other way of looking at it is that what is a mass term for a neutrino? You know that psi bar m psi. So let us look at we know psi bar gamma mu psi is psi l gamma mu psi l. This is the meaning of a vector interaction, it couples equally to left handed and right handed currents but the mass term is you will see if you just do this calculation. So mass term couples a left handed to a right handed pa partner ok it co co connects L to R or R to L ok. So either you see it as the neutrino is massless within the standard model and therefore there is no right handed current plus a very important point. Uh, which I will come to just remind me to tell you when we come to new, one more question about the neutrino 
I will tell you why there is one more interesting thing about this. It will make sense at that point. So, let us move on to the ninth question. Yeah. Ah, it is coming, it is coming, do not worry, I have 16 questions listed in my notebook, okay. So, we are still at 9, so it will all come and you can, yours can be the 17th, so, okay. So, my next question is, what is the nature of of charged W plus W minus interactions? So, what will you answer if someone asks you, what is the nature of uh, uh, electromagnetic interactions. I will say it is pure vector interaction, interacts with any particle with has, which has a charge and it interacts proportional to the charge of that particle, right. What will you say about W plus W minus charge current interactions? If someone asks you what is the nature of these interactions, what will you say? Ma'am, it uh, uh, does not conserve parity. Very nice. Let me just write this, okay. So, not, not pure vector because vector conver conserves parity, we know that, right? Okay, then nice, everybody try this. Ex Very good. So, in fact, it contains not just, so it contains both V and A, but it is something more special than that. Now, it is massive interaction. Very nice, this is what I was looking for. So, purely, purely left handed, right? Purely left handed, exactly left handed, nothing more than left handed here. You remember that the off diagonal ones, which are the charged W plus W minus, do not acquire any corrections and therefore they belong to pure SU2L. The W plus W minus does not even see the u1 y or anything else, okay. So, w, w is much greater than 0, so short ranged, very good. Anything else? Come, you have got parity, you know, now you just have to do one more, I mean. Parity is violated, what else? Can I write charge conjugation is violated? Yeah, both of them are flavor changing. So, you can write flavor changing, flavor changing plus delta Q is equal to 1, always, right? Because they are charged, they have to change the charge of the particles they interact with. So, flavor and, so this is why you see they change both the flavor and the uh, charge. Then of course, CP is a more, more or less conserved, we will write approximately conserved, right? Okay, we have not talked about time reversal, so I will not write anything about time reversal. So, did you understand the nature of uh, charged? Uh, so, my tenth question is what is the nature of Z interaction? I will keep this for you to look at. We have already talked about some of its aspects, so you can start all over again. Okay, so what do you know about? Very nice, it is neutral. So, no flavor changing neutral current, very good. So, neutral means delta Q equal to 0, right? Very nice, then? Again, it is massive. Very good. So, it is again short ranged, very good. Then next, you can even go go through this list and see, right? So, parity is not conserved, okay. C is not conserved. Is it purely left handed? C. It is, it is some coefficient times W3 plus some other coefficient times B. This is pure V minus A, this is pure V. So, in fact, the interaction is, so G by cos theta W is how it will come out instead of G by root 2, okay, and it will give you psi bar 
gamma mu into C V minus C A gamma phi into psi. So, it is not 1 minus 1, C V and C A are different for different particles. Is this clear? And all those G prime, G everything will all combine to form the G by cos theta w. Okay. Okay, now my 11th question. Ah, okay, fine. So now 10 questions are finished uh, with electroweak massless. Now we are coming to spontaneous symmetry breaking. So now we are coming to spontaneous symmetry breaking. So, first of all, so what happens or what happens when you re express the Lagrangian of a particle scalar, neutral scalar phi with m squared less than 0 that has global discrete u1 symmetry. I think the answer is shorter than the question. <laughs> so, this is the first case we did, right? We took a neutral scalar field and we took mass squared less than 0. So, we looked at the minimum of the potential and what did we find? So, what is what is it that we found? Field become massive. Field becomes massive. So, first of all, we find spontaneous symmetry breaking, right? That is what we have to say. And we get m squared dynamical is equal to minus 2 m squared, which was the so let us maybe call it capital M squared greater than 0 ok. Is it clear? Is it clear? And there are two minima and therefore the ground state breaks this u1 discrete symmetry. By the way reflection symmetry remains no or does not because only one is the ground state. So, now the same question. So, 12 is dot 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 same thing, but now I have a global continuous u1 symmetry for a charged scalar field phi is equal to 1 by root 2 phi 1 plus i phi 2. So, what happens? Again I am doing a global continuous u1 symmetry and I have a charged scalar field. Now, what happens? One of the massive, uh, massive scalar field will become massless. So, first of all you have to say spontaneous symmetry breaking happens. First of all spontaneous symmetry breaking occurs. Okay. And one of them becomes massless. So, let us call m1 squared is minus 2 m squared and the second one becomes 0 and you have a, so you have a continuous, so sorry I am going to phi 1 and phi 2 in the same graph. I hope this does not bother you. So, I have a continuous circle of minima and therefore, I have a Goldstone boson. So, whenever I break a continuous symmetry, I get a massless particle. So, here I did not get a massless particle, here I got a massless particle. So, my 13th question is obvious what happens when I do the same thing with a local continuous U1 symmetry for a charged scalar field? Hello? Yes. Uh, can you explain the previous question actually why I missed this SSD lecture? Okay. So, here whether you have a, a neutral or charged scalar, 
when you break the here global sorry when you break the global u1 symmetry you have spontaneous symmetry breaking which means l is still invariant under the u1 symmetry but the ground state is not okay so i have chosen the ground state to be there are two minimum points so let us please pretend that the third axis doesn't exist so let me look at this first case where i have a single phi and there is there are two possible minima at uh, phi squared is equal to minus 6 m squared by lambda is equal to some constant which we took to be v squared okay so this is the minimum so that means phi is equal to plus or minus v right so this is plus v and this is minus v but since the ground state must be unique i have to choose one of these two states and when i choose them the ground state therefore breaks that u1 invariance because the u1 invariance is because you have chosen one of the you can choose either one by the way you'll get the same answer and therefore the lagrangian is still invariant under that symmetry but the ground state is not and that is called spontaneous symmetry breaking okay and you will find out that if you re express therefore you re express the dynamical field phi dynamical which we call phi tilde as phi minus this quantity v then it has a non, it has a zero vacuum expectation value it's completely well behaved and it has a mass squared which is positive no longer negative okay and therefore it's a well defined physical field which has nice good fluctuations around the minimum which is the zero of the potential okay whereas if you have now a continuous symmetry and now i bring back the two dimensions phi1 and phi2 then i have a continuous circle of minima i can choose any point on this circle which has radius phi1 squared plus phi2 squared is equal to the same v squared and i can choose the same point phi1 is equal to v phi2 is equal to 0 as a choice in which case i will get this solution that this dynamical field so now i will again write i will again write phi1 dynamical is phi1 minus v phi2 dynamical is phi2 then i will get the masses of these dynamical fields to be something positive definite and the other one will come out to have a zero mass okay so spontaneous symmetry breaking of a continuous symmetry gives rise to a massless particle which is called a goldstone boson for every such symmetry that you break you're going to get one goldstone boson and therefore when you break su2 uh, which we saw in the su2 cross u1 theory you're going to get three massless bosons so now the question is we are still sticking with local u1 so if i have a loc if you have a u1 if you ha have a lagrangian which is now symmetric under not global but local continuous u1 symmetry what happens to the charge scalar what is the dynamical content of such a field that is the question correct so you will still have spontaneous symmetry breaking then you will still get one massive scalar which is the higgs boson and you will not get no dynamical phi 2 tilde field instead gauge field gets a mass proportional to g times v g is the coupling to that theory so here for example let us call this g and v is the vacuum expectation value of this scalar field is it clear Man. yeah Man. Ah. So I was doing this uh, your uh, local uh, local uh, local problem. Ha. So uh, this uh, last. So uh, when I was doing that, uh, first first of all we started with uh, scalar field with two degree of freedom and a vector field because we know uh, vector massless vector field. Yes. So local means you have a so you the content of this theory will be vector five vector. Uh, phi is equal to phi one plus i phi two by root 2 and a b mu which is massless 
that's what you start out with okay ha ah, now ask your question so when uh, when i redefine my uh, lagrange lens yeah. after after doing the whole thing ah. i will i i got four degrees of freedom on and means one degree of freedom for scalar field that is massive uh, that is massive mm. and three degree of freedom for vector field that yeah. is also massive means Correct. massive degree of freedom is totally disappeared perfect yeah perfect mind. yeah so perfect I don't know you are just you are just saying that there is massless degree of freedom there is no no phi 2 tilde at all but see there is no phi 2 tilde at all phi 2 is your massless degree of freedom it disappears exactly what you have got okay so you've got exactly the right thing there is one massive field which we identify as the higgs field there is no phi 2 tilde massless goldstone boson instead you have a massive uh, gauge boson which has 3 degrees of freedom so the counting is always 4 is this clear and ma'am i i also got a third term but i am not able to recognize it that is it looks uh, that is like some interaction between scalar and ah yes you have to do a gauge transform to fix that i did that in the class maybe you missed it i got uh just look at uh, oh ho oh, they have not uploaded the lectures no, no. uh yeah so that is the problem i yeah you will get an extra term so your extra term will look like right this is what you would have got okay and you have to fix this with a gauge transformation so uh, uh, he has promised that he will put the lectures up by today if it doesn't come up by tomorrow i will actually write hand write a sheet and uh, uh put this on the uh, slack uh, pages okay you would have got a term which looks like this right d mu phi 2 tilde into b mu right i think 2 yes or no webber okay fine so i will i will put yes even even after even after when even after even after using uh, uh, gauge transformation i got third uh, means uh, uh, another term after getting massive degree of freedom for scalar and massive degree of no no you cannot you cannot get that because once you do gauge transformation the phi 2 tilde goes into the gauge so there is no more phi 2 in the starting itself so it cannot appear anywhere in the equations uh, no ma'am not phi 2 i think he is talking about the coupling term even after phi 2 vanishes yeah yeah but coupling terms will be between b and phi 1 right so you can get b square so b phi phi terms you will get yeah you yeah you will get you will get b squared phi 1 phi 1 all that you will get yeah 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 we yeah. see we have never looked at the uh trilinear and quartic terms at all they are just interactions of the physical higgs field with the gauge bosons they will all be there in fact that's how the higgs was found right so the higgs higgs is produced through some maybe some uh, some gluon gluon fusion okay don't worry about it higgs this is the higgs what we call the phi 1 field okay and then let's say it decays to zz or it decays to W plus W minus. So all these are there, sitting in your interactions, right? So your B, B phi one, phi one, or B B phi one. All those terms are going to be here, okay? So I have not talked about it at all. Again and again, see, this is a, this is an elementary course in particle physics. I just want you to understand the basics. I I don't want. I want you to know that yes, there's a Higgs field. Higgs field will have its own interactions. It will interact with the fermions. It will interact with the gauge bosons. I uh, I have not actually shown you. In fact, we didn't even see the explicit interactions of the Z, right? Uh, which yeah, yeah, yeah. So there are self interactions of the W and Z, which you have not talked about. So forget about the the Higgs, right? All I told you was that there is a way in which the W W can interact with the gamma. so that the charge particle interacts with gamma but i did not even show what that interaction was like because it's kind of complicated right so i have not shown you the details of all those i want you to understand that physically this model can implement all the required observables okay
So that was 13. Yeah. Yes, 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 always, always, always. So now here is a question that we finally ask. So we said that now we are introducing now, now this is for uh, the full SU2 cross U1. This is not so, this is Lagrangian of full electroweak theory plus scalar. So this is a full uh, electroweak theory with the uh, spontaneous symmetry breaking. So I have now a doublet of uh, Higgs boson which I wrote as phi 1 plus i phi 2, phi 3 plus i phi 4, okay. And now, uh, the Lagrangian is invariant under local SU2L cross U1 y. What about the ground state? Ground state is phi is equal to, right? So what, what quantum numbers does it have? So what are its good quantum numbers? So quantum numbers are uh, T3, Y and Q. So I showed you in class that every T3 is broken, but can you reproduce that argument? The question is clear. What are the good quantum numbers of the ground state? See, whole thing about spontaneous symmetry breaking is that the Lagrangian remains invariant under all those interactions, but the ground state does not, right? So what all are broken? So if T3 and Y are both broken, only Q is remaining, okay. You can see that, let us do that actually maybe because this is an important aspect. I showed you the I mean let us take any sigma, right. Let us take uh, sigma 3. So what are we saying? I am asking what happens when phi goes to phi prime is equal to e to the i something phi, which can be both uh, SU2 and U1. So it will be e to the i g sigma a whatever theta a plus uh, by 2 plus i y by 2 uh, that is all e to the i y by 2 g prime g prime. Okay, So that is what you are having. So let me maybe I should write it down. So e to the i something is approximately 1 plus i something, right. So what is it? g sigma a by 2 theta a plus g prime y by 2 some let us call it alpha. So I am now going to act this upon the state phi which is 0 v 1 by root 2. So simplicity I have just started out with only looking at sigma 3. So what is sigma 3 on this state? 1, 0, 0, minus 1 on I am going to drop all the other terms is 1 into 0 plus 0 into v, 0 into 0 plus 1 into okay. So it does not really leave the state invariant. Neither will sigma 1, neither will sigma 2, neither will y. You can see that, right. So none of them will leave the state invariant. However, if you apply q on 0 v, what will you get? Q is i3 plus y by 2, right. So you can just check that this will be invariant. Okay, right. Actually, you can do it in another way. We know that the Higgs is the Higgs is phi plus phi zero, right? This is this is the neutral Higgs and this is the charged Higgs, right? So, what what is Q acting on this 
you can say q acting on 0 v is therefore the charge what is the charge of the phi plus it is plus 1 acting on 0 so it is plus 1 acting on 0 and what is the charge act of the neutral Higgs it is 0 so it is 0 acting on v so this is 0 right so e to the i q alpha is equal to 1 plus i q I am just taking the infinitesimal expansion of phi of 0 v is equal to 1 plus 0 because this is 0 acting on 0 v that is equal to 0. Can you see that therefore it is invariant? So the charge is the only good quantum number and everything else leaves an extra piece, everything else leaves some extra piece and therefore the ground state is only invariant under Q. So we say that spontaneous symmetry breaking breaks the SU2L cross U1Y leaving only either you call it Q or you call it electromagnetic, only the subset U1 electromagnetic or U1Q invariant. So the ground state is still invariant under charge. Was this clear to everybody? Okay. So my last question is, I should not rub this off, why did we choose phi 1 to get the non-zero ex vacuum expectation value and not phi 2, phi 3, phi 4? I have just given half the answer, please use the charge as the hint. Why did we choose? phi 1 to get the non-zero vacuum expectation value and not phi 2, phi 3 or phi 4. Phi 2, phi 3, phi 4 are massless and become components of the w's and z's right and the phi 1 becomes the massive Higgs field. So why did we choose that to be the massive Higgs field and not the others? Okay, this is little hard. So this is the neutral field. So this is a, you can see this is the neutral field. Okay, you don't want a charged field to get a non-zero non vacuum expectation value. It means that you can just pop charges out of the vacuum, right? And you don't want that to happen. So you, only the neutral neutral guy phi one acquires non-zero expectation value. Is it clear? So I think uh, is there any more? Okay, uh, let me see. Okay, <laughs> I wrote it as an extra. I'll put it on the Slack pages. You people can think about it. Okay, it's a little bit advanced question, so those who want can uh, answer it. So the sixteenth question I will put on Slack. I will stop now. Okay, so I think we have done a kind of comprehensive revision of everything. Uh, I hope that people have now seen where things come from. Okay, so. I want to finish in the next 10 minutes with giving masses to the fermions. See, we have given mass to W and Z, right? Now we have to give masses to the fermions. So that is the weakest part of the uh, standard model, but right now it has been verified through experimental observation at the LHC. So let us now write uh, Yukawa interactions. Maybe I should have put a name over here, okay. So Glashow So these are responsible for the original SU2 cross U1 theory and then various people discovered that the theory is renormalizable. But Yukawa's name appears because of other historical reasons. Uh, I do not want to go into that and uh, we will just leave it as. Okay. So what did we do when we wanted to get a mass for the W and Z? I replaced d mu phi by d mu phi and then I took the part, the ground state part
part of the phi and then this gave me the whoops what is happening today okay i'm sorry can you hear me now yes sir okay so where did i get lost here so okay oh, oh okay fine so how did we get masses for the gauge bosons we replace d mu phi by the covariant derivative capital phi okay sorry capital d mu and phi we replaced as the ground state 0v by root 2 and then that gives you the coupling between the the field sitting over here d mu contains w plus i i'm not writing all of them and that gives you masses for the correctly for the w plus w minus and uh, z and uh, not for the uh, a field right so this is how we got masses for the gauge bosons however if you try to write d mu psi goes to d mu psi that simply gives you the interaction between the gauge field and the fermions so that is not going to help so i need to devise an interaction between psi and phi so i need to introduce actually a new type of interaction and that is called the yukawa interaction where we'll find l yukawa so let me just write down the interaction you can see so new bar e bar l phi yeah so we know that the mass term has to mix left handed and right handed fields right so now let me expand this and see what we get so nu bar e bar so i am only interested again phi is 0 v by root 2 so 1 by root 2 0 v plus a dynamical part so the dynamical part will tell you how it interacts with the higgs field but this will tell you how you get the mass term so what will happen this is nu bar into 0 plus e bar into v so that is 1 by root 2 v e bar l yeah that is exactly the mass term that we want to get we want to get psi bar l m psi r right and this is simply the vacuum expectation value of the higgs field and therefore we want to allow some uh leeway because it's there's a proportionality constant so i will put n f e over here so f e times v by root 2 will give you the mass of the electron is that clear similarly i can write fd u bar d bar l phi dr so you can see that this will give me fd v by root 2 times dl bar dr plus interaction terms right plus interaction terms of e bar e with the phi field dynamical phi field right however this will only give masses to the down type particles electron d now neutrino anyway you don't want to give it a mass so it's fine but what about the up type quark i also want to give somehow mass to the up type quark right but you can see that this zero v will always give you only the down type non zero objects right so the solution is to remember that phi is an su2 field i just rubbed it off so phi was phi plus phi zero okay and therefore i can define a phi tilde which is i sigma 2 Phi star. That is because you remember that two and two star are the same things. Three and three bar were different, but there is no two and two bar. There is only a two. So if I define this, this is I. So what is I sigma two? Sigma two is zero minus I into I is one minus one zero. And what is phi star? Is phi plus what is phi plus star? Phi minus. so let me write it down so you can see this will be phi 1 phi 3 plus i phi 4 phi 1 plus i phi 2 1 by root 2 so this will be a 1 by root 
So, this will become phi 3 minus i phi 4 when you do the star ok. So, this is phi minus and phi 0 star is phi 0 star ok which will be 1 by root 2 0 into phi plus 1 into phi 0 star minus 1 phi minus which goes to for the ground state V0. Is this clear? So, I can write here. So, you will see this will become plus f u v by root 2 u bar l u r. So, this is actually the weakest part of the standard model, it has no predictive power. It introduces f e, f d, f u and then all the other generations. So, there are 6 generations with 3 neutrinos massless. So, it introduces 9 unknown parameters which you have to tune to the mass of the particle. So, this has to be tuned to the mass of the d, this has to be tuned to the mass of the u, this is tuned to the mass of the electron and so on. Okay. The only thing is that you have to ensure that because these are terms in the Lagrangian, they have to be invariant under SU2 cross U1. That is the only thing you have to check. So, what do you see for example, for SU2 it is very easy. This is a doublet under SU2, this is a doublet under SU2 and this is the transpose. So, obviously the phases of these two will match and then it will be invariant under SU2. This is a singlet, the right handed terms are singlets under SU2. So, SU2 no problem at all. I hope everyone is clear about that. That is if this acquires some phase alpha under SU2, this will acquire phase minus alpha and the two will cancel, there is no problem. So, what about y? What about u1 y? You have to be sure that the phase that you do on, uh, on transformation of the Lagrangian under u1 y will cancel between these three. So, for example, L prime will be F d. So, what will u bar transform as? u d transforms as, u d left will transform as u bar d pri bar prime which is e to the i y q l alpha u d right. So, I will have here e to the i. So, u bar d bar will transform as minus y q l alpha. So, that alpha will remain common. Phi will transform as phi prime which is plus y phi and dr will transform as plus y dr times this usual term. So, u bar d bar l phi dr. So, that means I want this to be equal to 0 so that it remains invariant under u 1. So, you will get sets of relationships like this. So, you will get one relationship here, one relationship here, one relationship here and so on and you can see that you are going to get all the hypercharge assignments. If you remember how we did it and we have to keep charge conserved and you will see that each one of this will just satisfy this combination and you will find that y of phi will be equal to 1, y of phi tilde will be equal to minus 1, this will satisfy all these arrangements. So, that is all you have to do. So, this is invariant. The Lagrangian is still invariant under local SU2 and U1 y and when it breaks, the ground state will only be invariant under charge Q which is this combination T3 plus y by 2. Okay? So, there is nothing more to be said about the hypercharge. As I said, it is the weakest part of the standard model. This completes therefore, giving masses to all the particles. So, you must remember one thing though. This gives you the masses for the quarks. So, the observed electron mass is simply F e v by root 2. But you do not directly observe the quarks. You observe protons, neutrons, pions and so on. Okay, so many hadrons. These hadrons are a combination of various quarks, but the proton is really very heavy compared to these quarks. So, really a uh, lot of the proton mass as which you see as the mass 938 MeV of the proton mass does not come from interaction with the Higgs because they give masses to the elementary quarks, but there are some uh, SU3 
non-abelian interactions which are the strong interactions which keep all these quarks together and call it a proton or call it a neutron or a pion and that is giving a huge contribution to the masses of these hadrons and that mechanism is completely unknown to us. We still do not have solutions because uh, it is a strong interaction regime, perturbation theory is not valid and we have not yet solved the question of how actually to understand the masses of the hadrons. But as far as the uh, E mu and tau massive leptons are concerned, this is completely fine. You can see that the same V occurs over here as occurs in the, the gauge boson masses are all proportional to GV. You remember that the W plus W minus was proportional to GV by, uh, by 2 and the other one was GV by 2 cos theta, right? for the z so that the ratio of the squares was equal to 1 that is the rho parameter and we know g this g is related to uh, either you write uh, g is related to oh, I need some I do not want to rub anything off here. So we know that g squared by 8 m w squared is equal to g f by root 2 so either you can relate it through the known m w to g f by root 2 or if you know the Weinberg mixing angle we know that g sin theta w is equal to the electric charge E. Whichever way I know G, right? I know G from somewhere here. So V was the only quantity, but the same V appears here. So if I know the mass over here, because I know that MW squared is equal to G squared V squared by 4, right? So if I know this, that same V appears over here, okay? So whatever be the mass of the Higgs uh, gauge boson, you can write this in terms of that quantity, okay? And next part is that I have written over here phi, I wrote only the ground state, but there are plus dynamical fields over here. So how will any Higgs field interact with the fermions? It will also have the same coefficient, right, Fe by root 2, because the Fe by root 2 is common for, for both these terms, okay. So that means that whatever be Fe, the interaction of that particular uh, lepton or fermion with the gauge, with the Higgs boson will also have the same proportionality factor Fe. Now you can see that since V is a constant, as the masses increase, Fe will, will be smaller than Fd, will be smaller than Fu, will be smaller than Fs, okay? So that means the largest value will be say for the tau, top quark, right? Because the top quark mass will be Ft by root 2 V times T bar T. But the interaction of the top quark also therefore will be proportional to Ft which is a very large number. So this statement reduces to understanding the fact that the Higgs boson interacts maximally with the most massive fermion that is available to it. So if the Higgs boson is produced, it will decay to Tt bar rather than to Uu bar or Ee bar. Is this clear? Is this clear from this analysis? Okay. So now we have taken the SU2 cross U1 model. We have now introduced uh, an interaction, a non-trivial interaction with a scalar field so that the Lagrangian remains invariant under SU2 cross U1, but the ground state does not reflect that symmetry. This leads to spontaneous symmetry breaking, masses for the gauge bosons and finally the Yukawa interactions give the masses to all these particles. So now we have the complete theory of electroweak interactions. We have to simply add a direct product group of SU3 to this. So to convert this model into the, this is the electroweak model. To convert this to the standard model, I have to simply do a direct product with the color SU3 group. This is a pure vector interaction, just like the electromagnetic field. But because it is a non-abelian group, there are self-interactions among the gluons, just like SU2. So it will just be a generalization of the SU2. So the d mu now will be d mu plus Ig, the gluon field, uh, plus Ig weak field, so Ig strong plus Ig prime P. And this will be instead of the, this is the sigma A W which are the SU2 matrices, this will be the lambda SU3 matrices and this will be the 
hypercharge. So you have the complete theory, simply a direct extension, nothing difficult about it. And since you have already got the masses for all the quarks, everything, and the gluons remain massless, I do not need any more Higgs field to make the gluons massive. So it becomes just simply sticking the SU3 group along with the electroweak part of the interactions. Except as I said, the strong interactions are difficult to compute because of the non-abelian nature of these theories. Okay? So that completes, yeah, ask. Uh, why are you especially uh, specifically using mu power interaction? You can work with the uh, simply electromagnetic interaction. How do I get masses for the fermions? The moment I put a mass term for the fermion, which is psi bar i gamma mu uh, d mu minus m psi in the Lagrangian, that breaks SU2 cross U1 explicitly, it breaks SU2 explicitly, right? That was the first question, that is why I wanted to re revise all this. Why do we do such complicated things? If I put m squared b squared term for, or w squared term, explicit mass term for the gauge bosons, it breaks gauge invariance directly. If I put a mass term for the fermions, it does not appear to be a problem, but then the d mu j mu will not be 0 because the d mu j mu plus for example will be m e minus m nu which is not 0. So you cannot put explicit masses, you cannot put i d slash minus m psi for the, for the fermions because that again breaks SU2 invariance. So you have to do something else and that something else you are desperate for, you want to do minimal amount of work. As I said, you need an interaction between psi and phi. Converting d mu to a covariant derivative only gives you the interaction with the gauge fields. That gave you the gauge field masses. But that does not give you any masses for the psi because that simply gives the interaction with the gauge field, right? So to I have to now introduce a new interaction between psi and phi and the simplest interaction that gives me mass terms is this Yukawa interaction. So by introducing a new standalone interaction between the, see I have interaction, I have introduced phi field. It has kinetic energy term, it has self energy terms. Then through the capital covariant derivative, it, it interacts with the gauge fields. How does it interact with the, uh, with the fermions? I have to introduce some interaction and that is my Yukawa interaction. That is the minimal possible way in which you can give mass terms to the fermion fields. So that now I have completed the standard model. I have retained at the Lagrangian level my nice symmetry properties, though my ground state of course violates it because of so spontaneous symmetry breaking. Uh, but uh, the spontaneous symmetry breaking achieves non-zero masses exactly as required for the correct count of gauge bosons and fermions. So now photon and neutrino are left massless in this model. So that completes the entire standard model. Yeah. So, ma'am, you have taken a massless uh, gauge theory, and uh, 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 by applying uh, this theory, spontaneous symmetry breaking, and using some interaction, you are uh, producing a ma massive uh, gauge theory, right? Yeah. So, how this this uh, spontaneous symmetry breaking is different from your mass regularization? It means uh, that we you between uh, ma mass regularization. Mass regularization? No, 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 no. See, the thing is this. Mass regularization just means... Here, here is uh, uh, giving mass to our theory. Correct. And uh, basically, uh, uh, in, in mass regularization, you are giving mass to your theory. Yeah. Uh, and uh, here, uh, no, no, no. See, uh, stop. Stop. You are getting mixed up now. See, mass, not regularization, but renormalization. What you find is that when you do higher order terms, for example, when you have loop diagrams, I, maybe I will make a remark on it in my last class. As I said, last class after you finish your presentations, I want to make some general remarks for a very short time, maybe half an hour or so, maybe I can make a remark about that. So what happens is that the existing mass is modified to some other mass, so the infinities are absorbed into that mass. But I cannot absorb infinity into a zero mass. I have to first make sure that I can have mass terms in the Lagrangian. Then I can consider those extra terms as being corrections to this mass term. So this is how you get masses at tree level. Okay. Renormalization is a completely different thing. Renormalization is saying that if I have higher order terms, uh, then if those give me divergences, what is the meaning of calculating anything in the theory? So to make the theory sensible, to make it give finite results, you do renormalization. But that has nothing to do with 
the masses of these particles. The masses of these particles, I mean, could be zero, could be non-zero, right? But if I add it to the Lagrangian, I have a problem. I cannot because then the symmetries are broken. So I add it this way. So now I have kept retain all the symmetries, which were the nice symmetries which gave me uh, agreement with my observable uh, universe, right? Now, of course, corrections to these and absorbing the infinities into the mass terms can be done. But you can only absorb it into a mass term if the mass term exists, right? So, I should be able to write a mass term in the first place. Okay? okay? Yeah. Know. Yeah. Okay. Fine. So, I, should I, shall I stop here? We have lost some people. How come? Oh, Amit and somebody. Okay. Okay. Fine. So, uh, okay, I think so now what I did was I wanted to in fact mainly review this whole uh, subject that we have done. So, please uh, think over this, understand this when you write the assignments so that you know you get some clarity on this second part and uh, so, your, so next class we will have uh, presentations okay, by all the students. I will send around here. Yeah. Yeah. So unless you do not understand something that the person has defined, please do not interrupt the presentation. We will give five minutes afterwards because, for. Because we have four four participants for. Uh, yes. Yes, that is okay. So you have twenty minutes, twenty. So that's eighty minutes, and that that still gives you five minutes each uh, for for each person uh, if you allow ten minutes extra in the class. Okay, that should be okay. Okay, that that's not a problem. As I said, but don't interrupt in between unless you cannot understand what is happening. Okay, good. So is it is it clear? Hopefully this helped. If you want me to put these questions up somewhere, I can do that. Uh, I didn't write it very neatly, but I think I can just put those two pages on Slack. Okay, so that you can think about them again. Are there any other questions? Shall we close now? Okay. Okay then. Bye everybody.